Welcome to the Nicholas 11X12 technology. Today we're looking at the Intel Core i5-3450 Ivy Bridge processor, which would be the lowest model of the Core i5 series. Before I continue, I'd like to thank Fortacus for providing me this product and I honestly think it's one of the best computer stores and online shops in Europe. But now, let's take a look at the box. Once again, we're looking at an Intel Core i5 CPU, which would be the i5-3450, which uses the LG1155 socket just like every other Ivy Bridge CPU does. On this side, you will get to see some highlights of this processor, like the Intel HD Graphics 2500 for example. On the back of the box, there's a description in different languages. And on this side, you'll see some specifications like the frequency, cache, socket and TDP. On top, you'll see the CPU itself inside a box. Now let's open this box up and see what's inside. Here are the Intel Core i5 installation instructions with a Core i5 sticker on the back. Of course this processor also comes with a heatsink which is fairly small. Thermal paste comes reapplied and the fan uses a 4 pin header. And here's the CPU itself in the plastic protection. I'll quickly open this up so you can take a closer look at the processor. There you go, here it is. It looks very nice but standard at the same time. For this review I installed this processor in the MSI Z77A-GD65 motherboard which I already reviewed early before. For cooling I decided to go with the Cooler Master V6GT aftermarket CPU cooler. But now to the specifications. The Intel Core i5-3450 is a quad-core Ivy Bridge processor with a base clock of 3.1 GHz and a turbo clock of 3.5 GHz. It features the Intel HD Graphics 2500 and the CPU has a TDP of 77 watts. The new 22 nanometer architecture is used and 1 MB level 2 and 6 MB of level 3 cache is offered. Dual channel DDR3 1600 memory is supported natively. In CPU Z, the processor gets detected without any problems, and once again, we're looking at an Ivy Bridge CPU that runs in the LGA 1155 socket. The TDP of 77 watts got lower compared to the previous generation Sandy Bridge CPUs with 95 watts at max. The new 22 nanometer technology is used, and the voltage got a little higher compared to Sandy Bridge, and that could also affect temperatures. That's because of Intel's new Tri Gate technology. The latest instructions are supported, and right now the CPU runs at 1.6 GHz on idle, but it'll go all the way up to 3.5 GHz once Turbo Boost kicks in. This isn't a case series processor, so you don't have an unlocked multiplier, but still, you could overclock it a little. Here's the cache, and once again, the CPU has 4 cores and 4 threads. Intel's hyper-threading technology is only featured on the Core i7 CPUs. I installed the CPU in the MSI Z787A-DD65 motherboard, and at the time of this video, the latest BIOS version is installed. For the memory, I got 8GB of DDR3 2000MHz RAM installed. But unfortunately, I couldn't run at 2000 MHz because somehow my system just didn't post when I tried to boot it up with that frequency. So I could only get it to run stable at 1866 MHz without overclocking the platform. That's kinda sad. I don't see a real benefit there with this CPU compared to Sandy Bridge. The other Ivy Bridge CPUs that I've tested so far were capable of running 2000 MHz memory without overclocking. There was not a single problem, but yeah, I just wanted to point it out and I'm not very satisfied here. But now, let's move on to the benchmarks. This is my test system. First, as always, is 3D Mark Vantage at the performance preset. As you can see, the CPU scored 19,458, which is pretty good for the price and I can't complain. Really, actually, I don't have much to say. In 3D Mark 11 at the performance preset, my system scored P4162, which is pretty good. You will definitely play games on ultra settings, but of course you should keep in mind that I was testing this with the GTX 560 non-TI graphics card. Now, in Cinebench release 11.5, the CPU scored 5.88 points, which is not bad actually. But I'd like to see just a little bit more, maybe 6.0 or so, but still for the price it's a pretty good score. So if you're thinking on getting the CPU for rendering, no problem, it will do the job just fine. But none of the Core i5 series CPUs can compete with the Core i7 processors in these type of tasks. In 8064 cache and memory benchmark I got some good results but not mind blowing ones over Sandy Bridge. The reason would be the memory, which is only running at 1866 MHz as you can see. Also Turbo Boost kicked in with 3.5 GB. Now it's time to calculate 1 million digits of pi with Super Pi. The CPU finished in 10.484 seconds, which is pretty good and I can't complain. 
But now in W Prime, I'll let the CPU calculate 32 million integers across all available cores and that finished in 10.576 seconds, which is also pretty fast. And now let's get to the game benchmarks like there are 3 at 680 by 1050 on ultra settings. The minimum frame rate I get is 48 and on average I get 58 FPS, so there's no lag in sight and that's why it's time to run a game like Battlefield 3 then. The game runs at 680 by 1050 on ultra settings, just the MSAA is turned off and the AF low to 1x. I get 45 FPS in minimum, 59 FPS on average and 79 FPS at max. So these are definitely great results and I can't complain. This was tested with a GTX 560 non-TI graphics card by the way. And if you are already talking of graphics then I should not forget to mention this CPU has integrated graphics. That would be the Intel HD Graphics 2500. This Ivy Bridge CPU doesn't feature the new powerful HD 4000 graphics like the i5-3570K or i7-3770K. Still it should do fairly well in basic tasks but for gaming it wouldn't perform very well. Just to give you an idea on how the performance would look like, I ran a single 3D Mark Vantage test at the performance preset. Here the GPU scored 1603, which isn't really a lot. But it's always nice to know that there's some kind of graphics integrated just in case your discrete GPU dies on you and you can't get a replacement that fast. At least you still can use your computer and that's great. Just in case these numbers don't tell you anything, I ran Dirt 3 at 1280 by 800 on ultra low settings and here I got 28 FPS on minimum and 40 FPS on average, which is pretty good. Unfortunately the results look a lot worse in Battlefield 3 at 800 by 600 and everything else on low settings. Here I get 17 FPS in minimum, 24 FPS on average and 36 FPS at max. So I don't think that's playable. But the iGPU wasn't meant for gaming anyways. And now to the temperatures. On idle I get 25 degrees celsius which are 77 degrees fahrenheit. On low the temperature goes all the way up to 55 degrees celsius which are 131 degrees fahrenheit. The ambient room temperature was at 21 degrees celsius which are 70 degrees fahrenheit when I ran the tests. So these are some great temperature results and I honestly really can't complain. Very low degrees especially on load. So that looks very nice but of course I'm using an aftermarket CPU cooler and not the heatsink that came with this CPU, but you should be fine with the stock cooler. And now to the final test, the power consumption. On idle the CPU with the GTX 560 draw around 58 watts from the wall and on load around 108 watts. So great results here and Intel did a great job once again, I really can't complain. The Intel Core i5-3450 CPU is a great choice if you want a good priced and performing quad core CPU that doesn't consume a lot of power. For games there's almost no difference when comparing the bigger i5-3570K flagship or even the i7-3770K. One thing that I really didn't like was the instability when it came to running memory at higher frequencies than 1866MHz. Just pay a little more and get the i5-3550 and it'll support that as well. So for gamers that's a good choice. Pros are good performance, plays games just like a Core i7 CPU, then it has a very low power consumption and has low temperatures. For the cons I only have one thing to say and that would be it doesn't support memory frequencies any higher than 1866MHz which is very important to me. That's why I give this processor an 8 out of 10 but still I would recommend the CPU. Once again I'd like to thank Fortacus for providing me this product and I really think it's one of the best computer stores and online shops in Europe. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.